Hi, I'm Haley Fitzpatrick, and today I'm going to teach you all you need to know about trigonometric substitution. We use trigonometric substitution when we have an integral that involves a radical, but that radical has to fit certain specifications in order for us to use trigonometric substitution to solve that integral. So, more simply, you can't just use the integral of radical x squared. Yes, it may contain a radical, but it does not meet the criteria necessary to use trigonometric substitution to solve this integral. This integral, dx over the radical of x squared minus 49, is a perfect example of where we would need to use trigonometric substitution in order to solve this problem. Now you're probably wondering, well, what is the criteria for trigonometric substitution? Well, it's simple. In the radical, you have to have an integer being squared being either added or subtracted to or from a variable being squared. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's actually pretty simple, and there are only three cases in which we can use trigonometric substitution. In an integral involving case one, you have the radical of an integer being squared subtracted from a variable being squared. In this situation, we're going to plug in a sine theta for x, but remember, in your radical, a is being squared, so you have to take the square root of a before plugging in for x. To refresh your memory, 1 minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. That's going to come up in a lot of these integrals, so make sure you remember that. Also, to refresh your memory on the Pythagorean theorem, here's a right triangle. In an integral involving case 2, we're going to have an integer being squared being added to a variable being squared. In this situation, we're going to set x equal to a tangent theta. Also, remember to take the square root of a before you plug in. Also, tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. That's going to come up a lot in integrals when we start to solve, so make sure you remember that formula. And here is the Pythagorean theorem once again to show you how to find tangent theta. In an integral involving case 3, we're going to once again have a radical, but this time the variable is going to be subtracting the integer. For this one, we're going to plug in a secant theta for x. To refresh your memory, once again, secant squared theta minus 1 equals tangent squared theta. Once we start solving, you'll start to understand why I'm reminding you of these formulas. Here is a right triangle involving secant. The first example we will be doing will be involving case 1. We have a variable being squared over the radical of an integer being squared subtracting a variable being squared, which just happens to fit into case 1, which is when we change x into a sine theta, as you can see. So, since a is being squared, a here is really 4. I always do side work, and I write everything out. So here for you, I explain that a is 4, x is a sine theta, so you plug in a, which is 4, so it becomes 4 sine theta. You need to square x, because it's being squared in the radical and in the numerator, 
And then you need to find the dx because the dx is also in the integral. So x squared is 16 sine squared theta, and the derivative of 4 sine theta is 4 cosine theta d theta. So here I'm showing you that I've just plugged in everything into the radical. So for the x squared in the radical and in the numerator, I plugged in 16 sine squared theta. I've left a squared there, and I have plugged in dx for 4 cosine theta d theta. Now the arrows are showing you how I break down the radical. So since both of both the a and the sine squared theta involve a 16, I can factor out a 16. And since the 16 is a perfect square, I can take the square root of 16, which is 4, out of the radical. That leaves me with 1 minus sine squared theta. Now we all know that 1 minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta, right? So we take the radical of cosine squared theta, multiplying by 4, and that becomes your new denominator. So, as you can see, now you have 4 radical cosine squared theta as your denominator. But everybody knows that the square root of a square is its original. So your new denominator becomes 4 cosine theta. That cancels with your 4 cosine theta on the outside, and you're just left with the integral of 16 sine squared theta d theta. Which, of course, everyone remembers that that is a power-reducing formula. How could you forget? That's 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2. So what I've done is I have turned that sine squared theta into that power reducing formula of 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2. I have taken out the 16 out of the radical. And what I'm doing now is I'm factoring out the 1 half. So it leaves me with 1 minus cosine 2 theta d theta with an 8 on the outside because I factored out the 1 half out of the radical completely. And now you can just integrate regularly. So you're going to get theta minus 1 half sine 2 theta plus c. Distribute the 8 and your final answer is 8 theta minus 4 sine 2 theta plus c. In the next example, we'll be using an integral that involves case 2. So here we have the integral of dx over the radical of 9 plus x squared. 9 is obviously a squared, and x squared is a tangent theta because it fits case 2, which is the radical of a squared plus x squared. So once again, I've written everything out on the side. a is 3, because the square root of 9 is 3. x is a tangent theta, so 3 times tangent theta. x squared is 9 tangent squared theta. And the dx of 3 tangent theta is 3 secant squared theta d theta. So here... I have just plugged everything in. For dx, I have plugged in 3 secant squared theta d theta. And in the radical, I now have 9 plus x squared, which is 9 tangent squared theta. The arrows indicate where I have simplified the radical once again. I have factored out a 9, so now it's radical of 9 times 1 plus tangent squared theta. The square root of 9 is 3, so I can take out the 3, and now I have 3 times the radical of 1 plus tangent squared theta. Now, tangent 1 plus tangent squared theta is secant squared theta, so now I have 3 times the radical of secant squared theta. So since my new denominator became 3, the radical of secant squared theta, the square root of secant squared theta is obviously secant. So my new denominator is 3 secant theta. That will cancel out with the 3 secant theta in the numerator and just leave us with the integral of secant theta d theta. And the integral of secant theta is just ln of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta 
plus C. Example 3 is going to involve case 3. This is the integral of dx over the radical of x squared minus 36. This is simply the radical of x squared minus a squared, which is where we substitute x for a secant theta. So, the square root of 36 is 6, so that is a. x is now a secant theta, so now it's 6 times secant theta. x squared is 36 secant squared theta, and dx is 6 secant theta tangent theta d theta because we found the derivative of x. So now I have plugged in everything. dx has become 6 secant theta tangent theta, and the radical has now become 36 secant squared theta minus 36. I have broken down the radical once again, and I factored out a 36 to leave me with secant squared theta minus 1. And I have taken the square root of 36, which is 6, and that has left me with secant squared theta minus 1 inside the radical, which becomes tangent squared theta times 6. So my numerator has stayed the same and my denominator has changed to 6 times the square root of tangent squared theta. The square root of tangent squared theta is just tangent theta, which will cancel out with the tangent theta in the numerator and the 6's will cancel, leaving us with just the integral of secant theta d theta. The integral of secant theta is simply the ln of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta plus c. So now you see why I encourage you to remember 1 minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta and tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta and secant squared minus 1 equals tangent squared theta because they come up a lot in these problems and they actually help you simplify the radicals a lot quicker. So you're probably thinking to yourself, Haley, when am I going to use this stuff again? Well, if you ever want to find the arc length of a function or whenever you want to compare two fluid forces, trig substitution will be your solution.